Today we take up on the second of three prerequisite lessons on effective prayer as taught by Yeshua. All three make up for a delicious, nutritious sandwich when fixed by his recipe. The first and third ones, like two buns, sandwich perfectly seasoned meat of obedience in between. They are covered in lessons 1.1, two don'ts of effective prayer. Each bun is made of refined, processed, and baked ingredients to perfection to preserve the purest loaf of fellowship with the Father possible. The choice meat of today's lesson deals with how to proactively align your prayer focus and impact reading in Matthew 6.6. 6. We plainly see the Lord's instruction. But when you pray, go to your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in secret, in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Matthew 6.6 6. So when you pray, go into your room. Suggest that Yah has blessed you with a private access to him, free of external distractions. Whether this is designed a designated room in your home, or just keen mental focus in the midst of any social situation, or discipline to abstain from looking at shiny objects competing for your attention, the objective here is to have a moment or session with the Heavenly Father confidentially. Shut the door means eliminate otherwise probable distractions from others. The confidentiality of your discussion with the Father is critical. Do not allow the attention of others on what you in fact are doing. Spending time privately dialoguing with him, resting assured that your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. A few things are essential for this to work for you. First of all, you must have faith. According to Hebrews 11.6, this is what it says. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Wow. To further define faith and where it comes from, we read in verse 1 of the same chapter, chapter 11 of Hebrews. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And also we find in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, exactly where faith comes from. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. For greater clarity and eternal context on why preachers are essential members in the community, read a few verses up from verse 13 to 15, also in Romans chapter 10. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Since faith is the key component for you to enjoy a fruitful relationship with our Heavenly Father, it's important for you to understand how he initiated a bond of love with you long before you even knew to regard him. Not only is John 3.16 true of his love for you, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that who called, empowered, and sent a special messenger to you to explain his profound love for you. That person knows your name, understands your pain, and by grace has been given the exact dialect you find easy to comprehend. All this is by the grace of Yah, and his love for you. For greater clarity on your father's on the father's plan for your life, go ahead and pray secretly according to James 1 5. Do this as often as you experience the itch of ignorance about anything of relevance, anything you want to know. In James 1 5 it says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally, without reproach, and it will be given to him. Let's close today's lesson with a bit about the open rewards you can expect. When some think about prayer, they think of perfectly normal to only speak to God when they find themselves in trouble or in desperate need of help. And when it comes to hearing from God, many mistake him for being dumb and mute like idols littering our modern social environment. What they miss out on is the fact that the Creator created humans to commune with them. Due to sin, we find ourselves consciously separated from Him, though. There is nothing we can do to fix this separation in and of ourselves. This is why he gave his son on the cross to repair the breach. The salvation provided in Christ not only removes eternal punishment for our sins, 
It also restores our connection with the Creator Redeemer. By grace, we are re with the phrase, when you pray. The choice of schedule and frequency is up to you. The way you approach is according to the recipe he left us as discussed in the prior lesson and this one. The, the rational reasons to pray is encoded in the proportional rewards available to all who seek him out of a pure heart. The initial and most miraculous benefit is eternal life, which is best defined as follows in Yeshua's own voice. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. That's found in John 17, verse 3. The second benefit is the wisdom of his omniscience, provided by association and the childlike trust it takes for you to ask and receive of him the understanding you need in everyday situations, as well as for objective insight about the plain path for your immediate plans to obey him. The third is the, is the credibility increasingly deposited in your character of godliness due to your faithful proximity and consistent time and joy with him. The more time you spend with the Creator, the more impactful you become in life, generally speaking. Others will celebrate the fruit of the Spirit flowing from you, nourishing them in every everyday, otherwise stressful instances. Once you master the key of secret prayer lifestyle, it's on your keychain, and you prove efficient with it. Other keys of the eternal kingdom, Romans 12, 2, Empowered Witness, Acts 1, 8, Spiritual Farming, Galatians 6, 8, Body Gifting, Romans 12, uh, Manifestation of Spirit, 1 Corinthians like in First Timothy or Titus, an internal teacher as an anointing living in you and teaching you whatever you need to know about truth. First John chapter 2, verse 27. Well, this concludes this lesson, lesson 1.2, uh, the master key of secret prayer and the benefits, the open rewards. All right, God bless you. See you next time.